<laughs> I have no idea. You have no Straight idea. face, genuinely no idea. I have no idea. All that's happened at the moment, let's put it out there in the world, is that the studio has just commissioned a script to be written for Wolverine 2. And whether that film will ever get made will depend on and so many factors, whether the studio likes the script, whether they find a director that responds to the script in a way that they like. Might that be me? Sure, I'd be extremely interested and thrilled if they, if they were to send it to me. Australia. Yeah, Australians are actually quite nice people. <laughs> It's a shock. <laughs> sure, when you played them rugby for years and thought they was coming to the earth, right? Exactly. Of course, shock. No, I'm kidding. No, they were great. I, I, we had a great time. I think you know, those of us from the southern hemisphere have a sort of down to earth um, um, way about us, and uh, I, I felt right at home in Australia. And, I, and the crews were really, really good, really great people to work with. I, I have not met Neil yet, but we have communicated. We've spoken because I had to get hold of him and, and tell him what a phenomenal job I thought he did. I mean, just. So excited! I sat in that cinema, and I felt like, you know, probably it was a great deal of patriotic pride in some way. But I, I don't think it was that. I think it was here is something so fresh and so um, out there, and yet so emotionally powerful. Um, it was just fantastic to see the originality of the piece. So, from a South African perspective, did you find it uh, true to its core? Yeah, I mean, scarily so. Oh. Yeah, I mean, I know those characters, those um, very well-meaning policemen who, uh, you know, think they're being very nice to you, but actually they're completely on the side of authority, but they're patronizing you to death, you know? <laughs> yeah, we grew up around those guys, you know? Scary. Mm. Well, you see, one of the things we knew going into this movie was that Hugh Jackman was going to have to do a certain amount of nudity in this film. So, um, you know, Hugh will tell you all about how he wanted to be like De Niro in Cape Fear, I was like, mate, you're going to be naked, you better buff up. <laughs> <laughs> no, to, honestly, no. Hugh is a phenomenal bloke, and I've never seen anybody uh, eat so much uh, chicken and steak and fish and lettuce for so long without actually throwing up. I mean, unbelievable. Seven meals a day of protein and a little bit of salad. So no CGI on that body. Right. Except for the claws. Oh, cool. <laughs> David Lean, Lawrence of Arabia. <laughs> you know, I mean, I don't know why I said that, but uh, just epic and character driven. Um, and I, I don't know that it's necessarily about genre so much as because in every genre there are films that do what they do really well. And, and I think that's the, the way to look at film. It's, it's, I don't think one should necessarily compare, you know, a drama with a sci fi except to the extent there should be good drama within the sci-fi, presumably. Um, but you ask, does this film do what it sets out to do well? Because in every genre, there's a sort of high point of the genre. And, and I just find that fascinating. That, that, um, that's why I love District 9. I think the guys have just brought to that genre a whole fresh perspective. The original script, they were not half-brothers. And there was some resistance to them because there's, there's only a sort of small section of the comic book world that says that Victor Creed and Wolverine may well be half-brothers and based on this particular comic where there's this character of Dog and blah, blah. Um, I just gravitated to that because just having, you know, one guy punching another guy, um, good guy versus bad guy with no emotional connection, just felt like, whoa, we could really just have nothing but punching and kicking. That was a way to... to build up the emotional power of the film. So, um, and I thought Liev Schreiber did a phenomenal job. In that of um, and I'm very pleased that on the Blu-ray disc there's a, there's a particular scene that I was somewhat attached to that unfortunately didn't make it into the movie. Um, My sister. And I'm, I, I, I say that you said without you saying that it should have. I, th I think it probably should have been in the movie, but I understood the arguments and at the time there was much back and forth about which way. But it's great to be able to, with a Blu-ray disc, to be able to put that sort of scene on the Blu-ray and let people think of other themes and ideas that, remember me? that, that, that were in my mind when, when we made that scene. If he'll remember me. No. Of course not. Then let him go. Can't beat him, Victor. Not without the adamantium. Then give me the adamantium. Tess came back. I'm sorry. You'd never survive the operation. I can take anything he can. No, you can't. Not yet. Be patient. Your time will come. He's lying. We have to stop this. I love you.
Nechá! 